Well done, well done. All right, so 48 is gonna be the number, that's gonna be the print that we're gonna get up and, and run in here. And while I'm getting that up and running, uh, Michael, maybe I can bring up some fun facts about these runners and you can kind of uh, let the audience know what you think about these fun facts. Okay. Wow, we got a lot of facts here. We got a lot of facts here. <laughs> I'm gonna start with Ricardo because he started using SolidWorks in 20, 2006. That's a, that's a good amount of time, right? Yeah, that's uh, a lot, a lot of SolidWorks. D and D, a D and D player. He, he's he drew a dragon in SolidWorks to get <laughs> that's started. That was his like starter project. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm I'm impressed. That's yeah. extremely impressive. Yeah. Um, what about Dom here? He's good at breaking, building, and fixing things, which is an excellent trait for an engineer. Yeah. You know, that's True like engineer. the number one trait, right? Yeah. You gotta take things apart, figure out how they work, put it back together. Yes, indeed. Well, speaking of putting things back together, that was the perfect amount of time for me to get this match ready. So here we go. Our very first SolidWorks versus SolidWorks matchup featuring Dom from the United States and Ricardo Salato from Italy. This CAD versus CAD battle begins in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? The tolerance is plus or minus three grams. This part is made from plain carbon steel. It's a tier five difficulty. So a little bit higher up on the difficulty scale compared to the earlier rounds. It looks like mm. both of our runners have had enough time to grab the screen capture. And so we are going to head over to this CAD versus CAD battle and see how they approach this thing. So both of our runners are looking at that 2D print. Both of our runners are trying to figure out what steps are involved in turning this into a 3D model. And uh, these, <laughs> these tier five models, sometimes it's worth it to maybe take a moment and come up with a game plan before you jump right in. Uh, but no, this looks like a real life model. I mean, this looks totally like, you know, something you would see out there. You know, you got, you know, some sort of casting here. It's uh, machined out. You know, it's uh, this is uh, bread and butter. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> bread and butter, mechanical engineering, some spring cavities, um, asymmetric part. You know, it's got those those uh, cyan colored bosses are on the one side, but not on the other. So it's not not full symmetry, but it's got some some symmetry. Um, Listen to you, cyan blue. Wow. Let's go. Yeah, I'm trying to expand my my lexicon of color shades. <laughs> Interesting to see Dom here drawing this thing in a different uh, different angle. It's almost like he's maybe got some machining experience and he's used mm. to doing, you know, like Z up or Y up. Uh, and totally. uh, yeah, that's the approach. Yeah, I, I totally thing. wouldn't have thought of starting it that way. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Dom is really moving through fast on this thing, but you know we've seen before that just because somebody gets that first feature created uh, doesn't necessarily lock in the win. And sometimes it, you know having some good, solid strategic planning can can really come through in the end. Yeah, no, no pun intended. Solid planning. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, indeed. But, yes, indeed. The, the uh, uh, yeah, I love uh, Dom's approach here, though, using the sketch contours. You know, skipping the entire step of trimming sketches. Right. You know that that saves time. You know, yes. In these kind of tournaments. Yes, indeed. And it almost looked like there he was able to jump from uh, those sketches into a cut extrude through all in like one move. That was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Ricardo on the right is he doing a full restart? Oh boy. All right. Well, sometimes that's uh, you know best to uh, start good. And yeah. have a model that updates correctly. Yes, yes, indeed. And we can see Ricardo here, you know, making that that adjustment may end up paying off because it looks like he's very confident about how to start that first feature. So, uh, oh, it wasn't a full restart. It was just a rollback. Oh, okay. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. He's back, yeah. to, back to that sketch. Good eye. Good eye on that. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I like seeing the interfaces of each of the players, and they're both almost exactly the same. You know, they both have the uh, the filters across the bottom of the screen, the selection filters. They have the command manager across the top. Um, both using the default color schemes. I mean, it looks this is as about as head to head as I've seen a match so far. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. Uh, very similar toolbars across the top as well. Like you said, um, the uh, the. I believe Ricardo on the right is using SolidWorks 2021 and Dom is using SolidWorks 2023. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, very similar, yep. you know, user interface, very similar experience there. 
Uh, Victor K says Ricardo's got that F8 toolbar. So, yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah. Very nice. They're both CSWEs too, which is uh, nice to see. I think we are, we are both CSWEs as well, Toby. Yes, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Certified expert. Exactly. I don't mean, know if mine's still valid, though, Toby. I mean, it's been a few years. I'll, 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 I'll say it's valid. <laughs> I'll validate it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so what that means for anybody who's watching to get a certified SolidWorks expert, you have to not only take one exam, you have to take, I think, five or six exams. So you have to first take your professional exam, but then you have to show that you've got discipline across, you know, or, or got proficiency across multiple disciplines, across drawings right. and mold design, surfacing, uh, uh, sheet metal. So many different disciplines in order to earn that uh, expert title. Right. Wow. Dom is, uh, you know, it's looking good at first glance here. You know, just kind of taking a look at uh, yeah where Dom is. A lot of good geometry. Ricardo as well. He's got some symmetry play uh, going here, it looks like. Yeah, really just kind of like a feature by feature approach. I like it. I like it. He's really wow. able. That, did you see Ricardo's S key menu? Uh, negative. I, I I glanced down just for a second, but now I'm going to be paying attention. I have never seen an S key menu that he's got it that maxed robust. out. <laughs> Victor K in the chat had the same reaction. <laughs> wow, that was a tool chest. That was not. That was insane. Wow, that's what I like to see. That's it almost looked it. like one of those old digitizer tablets back in the uh, early '90s with AutoCAD you'd use. You know? Yeah. I definitely remember having one of those. I think I think those I only cool. ever used it a couple of times. I think it was more of like a novelty. It was on my yeah. desk, but I was like, I don't think we do we need this still. It was like, no, nah, <laughs> that was a couple of releases ago. We don't really use that that much. I was like, okay. Well, back in the day, you really needed it because, like in AutoCAD, there were no icons. You were right. in DOS, and you had the the just the command the line graphic screen yeah. and a command line. And yep. if you wanted toolbars, you you needed a separate tablet on the side of you, yep. you know, like a simographics tablet. <laughs> yeah, I remember the 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 mouse for that had that like transparent circle with the crosshair. Mm -hmm. That's how yeah. you knew oh, like yeah. you were in the right spot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It was great. You could switch your layer colors really quickly. You could go to color eight cyan blue really oh, yeah. quickly. Cyan. You know, all those colors are all back to the pen plotter days, right? You know, you think it's like that. that Todd, was like how it was all. Todd made. Becker in the chat says those were the days he remembers. Oh yeah. Maybe one of the tournaments we can we can have it be everybody has to use that antiquated hardware. Yeah, yeah. Get get somebody <laughs> yeah. on a uh, you know a uh, Pentium or a uh, you know a, you know, a, you know get sixty six megahertz yeah. with a math coprocessor three yep. d six or something. You know. I like Ricardo getting in there and using a move face command. That was pretty solid. That's, yeah, you gotta call it a move face if yeah. you see one. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like you like you said, Dom is getting in there. Um, Kind of like doing some final checks here, looking over this thing, uh, really going feature by feature uh, as he's been going through creating this model. But uh, looking pretty solid, I got to say. Definitely uh, looks like he's he's got a great game plan, uh, kind of figuring out if there's anything missing, anything going wrong with this. But overall... Todd Becker on his Pro E workstation, HP. Was that on uh, HP UX? Was that Unix? Hold Todd? on, I think we're going to see an answer coming in. All right, here we go. Let's get focused here. Dom's looking right. looking over the part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Todd Becker confirming it is Unix. Very good. Very good. All right. All right, all right Dom. Okay, Dom coming in with an answer. 2533. That is not correct. That is not correct. So, and I think he just zoomed in and saw something that looked a little little funkadelic there. Yeah, maybe, you you uh, called out there might be a little... Uh... <laughs> Little boogers. Little, yeah, exactly. Little dingus hanging out there. Oh, I saw dingus. the S, saw the S key menu there from Ricardo. I was paying okay. attention. Yep. Aaron yeah, C yeah. in the chat. There dingus. It is. Yep. <laughs> <He knows. laughs> so uh, just to review here, Dom answered two five three three, and that is not correct. This model has a tolerance of plus or minus three grams. Um, and that was outside of the tolerance. So Dom is able to continue, uh, continue on. He now has the opportunity to go through and kind of examine his model, see if he can't figure out where the mistake was uh, and even potentially enter a revised answer. Uh, meanwhile, Ricardo, this could potentially open the door for Ricardo while Dom is going through and trying to figure out uh, where his error was. So we're gonna see what happens here. We don't, uh, we don't say anything until the answers come in through the chat. So we kind of let our runners figure this out. 
Uh, Looks like nobody else has got it yet. Nobody else is faster than Dom or Ricardo. Yeah, Dom made very short work of this model. I got to say, I am super impressed uh, with how quickly he was able to get through this model. But look at Ricardo. Looks like he's kind of on the home stretch as well here. Yep, yep. So I was looking at but, Ricardo's model, and it looked like it was too thin. It looked like it was, you know, it looked like he was missing something. Dom comes in with an answer. Two, four, nine, one. And that is correct. Nice. Wow. Nice. Dom, let's go. Well, the job there. Very Dom. nicely done. Nice. Well done. And, and look how close uh, Ricardo was with the with the uh, the answer here too. Yeah, Ricardo coming in right behind him. Uh, coming in with that two six five two, just a little out of spec. Two four nine one is the correct answer. And that one is going to go to Dom. And wow, wow, wow. GG to Dom. Guys, if you want to put a GG in the chat for Dom, that was really, really.